Today I'm joined by cameraman Mike and the camel crew. What's up? How are you, Mike? I'm good. How are you? Check out what we found. Yo. <laughs> Oh, epic. Professor Mort, how would you describe the camel crew? They're the friendliest bunch of flea market flippers you'll ever meet. It's such a good way to use our imagination. <laughs> <laughs> if you see the camel crew in public, make eye contact and shake their hand, they'll give you a coin. Today as we hunt, we're gonna be covering the eight exclusive Blockbuster Nintendo 64 rentals. I mean, those of you complaining about the prices of video games today, you know, video games back then were $79.99, $69.99, and that's in 90s dollars, they were expensive. So renting was a must. Today I'm gonna to review every single Nintendo 64 game that was exclusive to Blockbuster Video. From the original NES all the way up to the original Xbox generation of games, the Blockbuster Video exclusive rental was a curious collection of curated bunches. Some of the games were mere alterations of their original counterparts, while others were full-fledged single-player experiences. The Blockbuster Video Game exclusive was a staple for 90s gamers and beyond. The advantage for Blockbuster was that they could drive traffic to their stores by having exclusive access to video games that gamers could only play by renting them from their stores. Of note, not every Blockbuster retail exclusive was a Blockbuster retail exclusive permanently during its release cycle. Take for example the first game that we're going to be covering, Indiana Jones in the Infernal Machine. The game itself is a meaty 20 hour single player campaign that takes a lot of inspiration from the game series Tomb Raider, which itself is ironic because Tomb Raider probably took a lot of inspiration from Dr. Jones. It's a plane. According to reports online, after the initial rental period, you could order this game directly from LucasArts' website. Thanks to its great graphics and gameplay design, many would say that Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine is the best of the blockbuster bunch and probably should have had a regular retail release. Porchman's going for a full Nintendo Wii set for some reason. So when you collect for the Wii, you have to train yourself to look for the white. But sometimes you get Forrest Gump. You never know what you're gonna, you never know what you're gonna oh, <laughs> you got You got it. Play Dream, Little Nemo Dream Master. I'm more interested in this Anne Rice box set. You gonna go for it? <laughs> I have interview with the vampire and I'm not oh, so yeah. interested in this group. Austin, do you have the greatest hits, Just Dance? I actually don't. Time to change that. And luckily it's in there. But click, click. Maybe that's a library copy. <laughs> Maybe I have to go check it out. Yeah. From the, the front, probably in for a dollar. I see some games over here. Got some uh, Call of Duty on the Wii. That's the way to do it. With Krispy Kreme. He's got World at War on the Wii. I've bought from this guy before. He's good deals. My first find of the morning are these Nintendo Zelda figures. I said that wrong. These are official licensed Nintendo figures. You can see the seal of quality on there. This is from Twilight Princess. Which, how do you feel about Twilight Princess in general? All the Zelda games are pretty, pretty good, so. I thought you were gonna say something negative. And this one's from Majora's Mask 3D. Ask him about Wind Wake. <laughs> what I love about these is they're from the Medicom Toy Corporation. <laughs> Here, gra grab this other figure. So these look like they're Japanese um, uh, Nintendo Store exclusives, I think. This right here, Medicom, they're yeah. a very popular action figure company. They usually make high-end action figures. And then I think this one sold recently around like $75. Yeah. So he had them at 60 each normally, and I I offered 100 for both, and he went for that. This will go great. I don't really have anywhere to put these. You know what I'll do? I'll just stand there and hold these permanently like this. You know, no, this would be good. Let's stick them like this. I will not open these boxes. You shouldn't either, because that's just the kind of collector that I am. A loser. <laughs> I'll be 25. Metroid Prime Pinball is such a fun game. I lost hours of my life to that game. I didn't lose, I donated hours of my life to that game. The idea of an adventure pinball game with digital elements is something that's been done really well by studios like Zen Pinball. But this game on the DS is great. There is this rumble feature though, that you can use to play the game. Now I'm playing it on a 3DS, so this is more if I pick up the DS Lite. I don't think I have this. Let me check my copy right now. It's over here. Do I already have this or not? Cause I don't remember if I picked this up at another collection or at another event. I do not. 25 bucks. My copy is now complete. And this Game Shark for 15. I'm not flipping any of those items for the manual, but I am flipping this for the manual. This is a Game Shark 
for the Game Boy and Game Boy Pocket. Both of these gave me for about 25, 30% off their normal price. I paid 40 bucks for this and the Rumble Pack, and that's, that's a smoking deal. And we now have an episode this morning because there's things that were picked up. So <laughs> that's all that matters. You did well. I did well. Josh and I have been uploading a lot on the podcast channel, Mort's Attic. You should head over there after this one and, and check that out. Make sure you're subscribed too. After that find, I think we need to talk a little bit about the next Blockbuster exclusive. Daikatana is a first person shooter that was notoriously preceded by an advertising campaign where John Romero, the game's designer, promised to make us his bit. Aside from that pleasant little detail, Daikatana is ultimately just a pretty mediocre game with some ambitious ideas, like an RPG up upgrading system for your character. From the get-go, there was a co-op element planned for this game, however the N64's processing power couldn't handle all of that, so that stayed exclusive to the PC version. However, it ended up being a pretty frustrating element of the game as it felt like an overlong, irritating escort mission. Daikatana was available to run exclusively at Blockbuster beginning July 31st, 2000, however it did have a limited retail release for the holiday season later that year. Let me tell you what happens next. We keep game hunting. <laughs> could be a promising situation. promising dig situation yeah for you okay i got first dibs because i saw it first friends this was a garage sale prices booth look at this thing would you buy that looks like um it's got, it's got the disney tag inside it look at the tag i think you need to try it The first thing that I grabbed was these two Nintendo Switch cases, which are Splatoon 2 and Crash the Insane Trilogy. I'll probably give these away at an event because wait till you hear what I paid for this stuff. Oh, dude, that thing's awesome. Next thing I grabbed was this Birdo stuffy, which I'm going to be reselling to put funds towards the manual. We're digging around and I noticed some familiar casing around me and I'm like, that's kind of weird. Maybe is this like custom made or like an Etsy thing or something? Those are actual official coasters. I'm, I have to get them. And it's these original PlayStation coasters. These things are so cool, but they're actually an official PlayStation product. Not a very good one. Look at the back. Like the artwork's all smushed together and everything. So it doesn't look great. Someone just kind of squeezed the image in and, and pressed print. These are not fan-made items. And I just think they're super, super rad, but still not the most interesting find at this table. Wait till you see what I got next. Initially, when YouTubers were coming out doing hidden gem lists for the NES, one of the first games that got highlighted was Bucky O'Hare. And there is this book of Bucky O'Hare. This is a legit item from, where is this? 1986. This thing is pretty wild. And it's just an, an awesome little graphic novel with all this fun stuff in it. But this is a real authentic vintage item. I don't know if this was like a collector stuff that someone picked up at a garage sale and they're just clearing out the house. But this guy, the coasters, Birdo in the cases. Yeah, 10 bucks is a no brainer. That was, that was an amazing find. Awesome. Let's talk about the next Blockbuster exclusive game. This one is like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, but for kids. Razor Freestyle Scooter did have a traditional retail release on the PlayStation 1, but if you wanted to play the N64 game, you had to rent it exclusively at Blockbuster. As a game, it's okay. It's a pretty mediocre experience, and it just makes me want to go back and play the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater games even more, because this game really doesn't add anything new to it. Plus, skateboards are way more fun than scooters. Or Razors. Razor Scooters. Razor Freestyle Scooters. Just play Tony Hawk. You gotta get the big one too. You see, you going to the ring. What would Tony's boxing name be? You give him the one. You give him the two. You the only names I can think of are now for the internet. Uh, Hot Tub Tony. I don't know. Hot Tub Tony would be actually a pretty good boxing name. <laughs> Three, four. Shut the door. <laughs> Porch Man is going for that Nintendo Wii set. So anytime I see those white Wii cases, I'm looking for them and I'm gonna see what's there. And, and I found a few and then, uh, what is wrong with me? Have some manners, Mort. You don't just burp in front of people. Please forgive me, let's continue. My bitch is nobler in the minds of men. What was the guy's name? Petronius, Claudius? Claudius. Whose head was it? Mark, just Mark. We come up on the stack of games and I notice immediately a GameCube game and it's Soul Calibur 2. I think this is the best way to play this game. I know that the Xbox One natively does 720p 
on an original Xbox, but you got Link in this game and they programmed him so well. He's so fun to play as in this game. All right, we got a couple of games at this lot over here, or at this booth over here. This Party Mega Mix game, who's the publisher? Atlas. Austin didn't have it. So I made sure to give it to him, 25 bucks for all three. This series is sponsored by Goodies. They're the negotiation app. And over the weekend, I just listed dozens more items on my Goodies storefront, including these ones that are up there right now. Make sure to head over and check out what's there and make your own Goodies profile and list your own things that you not only want to sell, but also want to buy. Thank you so much to Goodies for sponsoring the video. Game to be found. Oh, no game. Just grab this case for a dollar. I never say no to dollar cases, even if it's a replacement, but this is a game cartridge that I find all the time, but I never find um, oh, it's the separate case by itself. So this will be easy to complete. When I'm at an event, if you see cases or empty cases at my booth, just ask. I usually just give them away to people. Usually. Not always. Don't get greedy. Greed's for resellers like me. top five movie of all time for me uh this movie you get to a point in it where you think you're tracking with what's going on and then it flips it at the very end and weeping just weeping i used to have the privilege of getting to write film reviews and film content for a website and as a part of that they would send me out to different press junkets and screeners to interview directors actors and actresses and you know get to do write-ups on these films in advance it was super fun very much a hobbyist thing three of porsche man's favorite films uh, i'm going congo 1995 that's okay. number one i'm just gonna stick with jerry goldsmith i'm gonna go 1999 the mummy and 97 la confidential jerry goldsmith only let me tell you four of the most influential and impactful films that i've ever seen number one is asteroid city and for so many reasons viewers of the channel who have been around for a while probably know the answer and the reason why it's hard for me to not be biased about this film but being there on the set watching everything go down seeing everything that got to happen on that made me just love this film this just in from the president he's furious thanks a lot ricky the other is punch drunk left i want to tell you something i've got to tell you oh no I saw a picture of you guys, your sisters and you. Um, I saw your picture and I really wanted to meet you. One of the things that I loved about Punch Drunk Love was that it's so surreal and bizarre, but it's such a great study of Adam Sandler's character in Neuroses and kind of kind of the, the whole unhinged element that's underneath his goofy persona, but it's brought out in this love story that at times is bizarre and at times violent and at times hilarious, but at the time, at the same time is so masterfully told and, and that soundtrack is just so weird, but at the same time so perfect. Have you heard of City of God? City of God's great. That's why it's like my favorite movie. I like The Mummy 2. What, the Mummy 2, the sequel. Yeah. Mummy 2, the sequel, Return. Yes. Okay. Was the, the, the Rock also. Was, that was his yeah. debut. Right. Uh, Rush Hour 2. <laughs> Waiting for Guffman is possibly my favorite comedy ever made. I've, without exaggeration, seen that movie between 40 and 50 times. I believe the... Um, great. No, why don't you just put that back there? Strike and... it? Yeah. Uh, we've done a few shows for Corky before, Thank so we know all so the terms much. already Thank going you. in. Thanks so much. It Thank was really you. fun. There's so much in that movie that makes me die of laughter, and it is so dry. The humor is so dry. You want to, do, do you want to be in my video? No. Oh. Okay. No, I, I'm, I'm stupid. You got it. <laughs> and finally, there's Martin Scorsese, who I love not just as a filmmaker, but as a film educator. Any of the movies that he's been a part of in the special features, like on the Criterion Collection, for example, if his name is listed on the back of the box, I would just go out of my way to see that film. But of all of his films, Goodfellas probably is the one that is the most impactful to me, because in watching that film, not only from a technical mastery side of things, but just from an understanding and portrayal of characters and their pathologies, it's so brilliant. And it's so deep and it's not something that's romantic at all or romanticized uh lebowski swingers and three amigos wow great choices i have a, a youtube channel we are finding cool stuff at the swap meet and things like that mostly video game focused but i'm a huge film fan as well those are four of my most influential films Tell me some of yours in the comments below. NFL Blitz is one of my favorite arcade sports titles, but back in the 90s, they were being released maybe too frequently. 
Here's one that was a Blockbuster exclusive for the Nintendo 64. According to Giant Bomb, NFL Blitz Special Edition is basically a reskin of the game NFL Blitz 2001 on the N64. They're virtually the same game, but this one has updated rosters. NFL Blitz is one of the most fun multiplayer game series you can ever play. If you're going to play this game on the N64 and you don't want to shell out all the money for this version of it, the 2001 and 2000 versions are the way to go, as they both have four-player support and are a blast to play with friends. Maybe I should have got the 62. Especially if it's 10 bucks. Yeah, probably 10 bucks too. Yeah. You got it. No, I don't want any more consoles. I have so many consoles in my house right now. I don't now. even own a Xbox 360, let alone. Let alone. Uh, <laughs> to necessitate. Entire, uh, whatever. Oh, yeah. What's that yeah. from? Wayne's World. Stacy. Yeah. The crazy girlfriend. Hey, Wayne. Which is, what's her name? Laura, Lauren. Laura Flynn Boyle. Laura Flynn Boyle, that's it. These look like they got wrecked in like a flood or a fire and I'm still gonna dig through it. Everything on this table looks like it was in a house fire, which in selling it, wouldn't that make this a uh, fire sale? <laughs> Animal Crossing. Oh my gosh. Oh, here you go. This one actually looks okay. Sonic? 20? I want to touch it and I don't want to touch it. 50 bucks for these three items. That was a close one for me. I appreciate you being in there in a pinch. I need controllers to go with a couple of consoles I got, but I don't know if this is a good buy. There's no manual in there. The disc was a little scratched up. No, um... Is it or is it, am I thinking Sonic Adventures? And then the controllers, he insisted that they worked, but honestly having those games out made me just kind of really suspect on whether or not they did. The, was, the fire saved games. Let me know if you think it's a good buy. Plus Marco's here this morning. We head over to Marco's booth and Marco is the gentleman who was selling the Zelda game that we got for really cheap and then gave him more money for. That's in the ethical questions for resellers video. Make sure to check that one out. The link is in the description below. First one, Astral Chain. This is, I think, one of those ones that in the future, Nintendo Switch owners are gonna be clamoring for. It's a great game, an amazing art style. Which ones are you getting? Mine Rider 2 Unbound. Make sure if you find a physical copy for this that you hang on to it for a little bit. I have a feeling about this one. Oh, yeah. Pikmin 3 is the one that, if you find it, is worth quite a bit. Speaking of games that I have a feeling about, Advance Wars 1 and 2. This one's factory sealed. The reason I think this one's interesting is because I have not heard a lot of people talk about this game except for right when it was released. I'll just get one. I don't need to hoard two. I don't see it pop up anymore at stores all that often and I don't see it go on sale either uh, at all. I'm playing through actually these two right now. Very fun. Interestingly, Dragon Quest Builders 1 is a very collectible game for the Nintendo Switch, but I'm noticing this one's starting to climb up in price as well. This is also brand new factory seal. I'm gonna see what Marco's best deal is on these four titles. And lastly, for my collection, I got Shellshock 2 Blood Trails. This is one of those games that I remember that this was, uh, you know, an, an original Xbox game, Shellshock. You got a bundle if I get them all? All right, let's see. I'm a sucker for first person shooters. I just want to give this one a try. $60.95, 105 We'll do $90 for you. Love it. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Konami basically invented the gameplay template for track and field games on the original NES. The N64 version is basically a mediocre, if not kind of good, version of those NES games where there's a lot of button pressing and stick twirling on the thumbstick of the game. Controller. How much do you pay? Two bucks each. That's a good price. Yeah. Endless hours of fun for $4? Forget about it. In IGN's review, they found the game to be fairly mediocre overall, but they did warn of the body damage that would occur from the stick twirling mini games that could cause blisters just about as bad as the Mario Party series. Like, honestly, how long can you play a Wii game? Like, 15 minutes? The N64 is home to iconic 3D platformers, thrilling racers, and great first person shooters. But one genre that came up notably short on the N64 is the fighting game genre. Released in July 2000 as a blockbuster exclusive rental, Transformers Beast Wars is a one-on-one -on -one fighting game that ranks as one of the very worst in the console's library, regardless of genre. Joe, what do you think? Have you been enjoying our time with the Nintendo Wii? Oh yeah. In addition to having some of the worst graphics of any game in the entire console library, the gameplay mechanics are so poorly done, there's just nothing fun about this experience and it'll have you reaching for any other game in the N64 console's library, maybe even Superman 64. There's a few reseller booths out this morning, but one of them is manned by my friend Christian, who I've bought Amiibos and other items from before in the past. 
not only at swap meets but at buy sell trade events as well. So from the GameCube, I got a uh, Game Boy Advance, DS, a uh, 3DS game. I also have that drum set over the Wii one. Uh, three, three games. The Rock Band. Oh, yeah. I have it for uh, 15 bucks. Well, all three games. Austin, that's an immediate sale for you. I think I'll probably get it. Do you have any garbage Nintendo Wii games? Wii U games? <laughs> no, regular Wii games. Austin oh, buys yeah, Wii. Oh, yeah, I actually do have some. You got a yeah, Bowser Amiibo, a little Princess Peach for the girl. Yeah, just go ahead and pick what you want. I'll work with you, you know? I'm always just, like, negotiable myself. I don't know why, but just because. All right, I'm just going to throw out some prices. You tell me if you like it, okay? All right. Awesome. I doubt. Let's start right here. <laughs> that fits you personally it kind of does look at this like kind of no one wants this game hoshigami how about like 20 bucks all right we're getting close a couple more uh, 20s and we're good but then i also feel like this does too little mac little mac can i just have beavis and butthead just can i just have it go ahead yeah. not just kidding and christian you hooked up mike on that how much did he get for all that uh, i give all those for 50 dollars. oh dude fantastic great deal thanks christian This is a raise out, shades out kind of moment, but I had left my glasses in the car. Like feeling vulnerable. All right, Ellis Depario Siberiano. Can you do this? Looking at you, bro. Let me tell you about my favorite Blockbuster exclusive game, Stunt Racer 64. From the moment Stunt Racer 64 was announced, I was following its development from the beginning thanks to its developer, Boss Game Studios, who are known for making high quality racing games. Initially known as Stunt Racer 3000, the game is an arcade racer that features a number of wacky cars and tracks in surreal environments that's a lot of fun to play. To spit. Don't forget to check out the four player mode, which is a blast to play as well. So I've needed a PS3 controller all morning because I found a console recently and my man here hooked me up. How much are we doing this? Uh, we're doing 15 today. Deal. As we're walking away, the vendor motions to me and says, come on over here, I got something for you. And um, he says, do you like the Sega Genesis? If you can't make nothing, I get it, but- I'll, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, was, I was asking 100, but I'll do 90. 90? And I'm mostly just trying to, I, I just don't do Genesis, so. Yeah. The vendor brings out all of these games and at the sight of just one of them- Do you uh, take Venmo? Yeah. Versus a few common titles like the Terminator, Jungle Strike, The Lion King, all four Sonic games. And that wasn't enough to make me be really excited about the lot until I saw this one. I think that one you can get like 50 years. Dude, awesome. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Hyperstone Heist. Now the best way to play the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles games is on the Cowabunga Collection. Amazing deal. Dude, thank you so much, Junior. Thankful to Junior for hooking me up with that Genesis slot. Make sure you go to my goodies store and you can find some of those games there for sale right now. We're now at the very end of the swap meet, which means it's time for one last game to talk about. Sculptor's Cut! Clay Fighter Sculptor's Cut is a mediocre at best, irritating and distasteful at worst update to the game Clay Fighter 63 and a third for the Nintendo 64. To hear more about my thoughts on the Clay Fighter series as a whole, check out Finish the Hunt episode four. Finally, as we're heading out of the swap meet, I noticed this little clear case and there's some video game items inside and I noticed this pink Nintendo DS. This one's in pretty good shape overall, but it wasn't the DS that really caught my attention. It was the authentic copy of Pokemon Fire Red. Just grabbed these two items for $100. They were great. The label's a little worn on this, but still 100 bucks. Awesome deal. Mark's channel. Uh, we got some great deals today. Let's see what we got. Uh, Mark, man, what do you think about your events today? Uh, pretty good, but not as good as the deals on pets.com. Thank you. That's the video of the morning right there. That is it. Porchman grabbed a few Nintendo Wii consoles. Let's plug them in and see if there's any games still inside. All right, we're testing the Wiis. Let's go. Oh, <laughs> the worst. One dollar value, maybe. For the family Wii. No GameCube. Ooh. Let's go. That's pretty good. I like it. Let's go. Hoo -ah. Hoo -ah. What would you say for that one? Five or ten. That was the price of the day. They were both either. I think they were. I think they were 10. both ten. I think they were both ten. Oh, weird. We checked all the consoles, not at the swap meet, but here at the garage. Hmm. The video game rental store experience is one that many of us treasure from our childhoods. 
But the exclusives didn't stop with the N64 generation of games that continued on into the next generation as well, with games like this, Freestyle Street Soccer on the original Xbox. But for some reason, these versions of the Blockbuster exclusive aren't quite as collectible today as those of the NES, Genesis, Super Nintendo, and N64 era of games. At least not yet. But the clever idea of making a game more enticing because it's available exclusively to a certain retailer for a certain period of time, that hasn't gone anywhere. In fact, it's probably more alive than it's ever been. Limited release companies are releasing games within time windows and at certain quantities, after which they're all gone. This makes them more collectible, but also more enticing for collectors and gamers to go after and get those items. But why is that? We want to play those games because they're more limited, not because they're necessarily great games. Which isn't to say that all of the games being released aren't fun. In fact, a lot of these re-releases and other games are a total blast to play. And it's wonderful that we have the ability to play them in this manner. But it is still curious. Would we buy them if they were all available at traditional retailer release just because of the games themselves? And that I think is a really enticing question. What inside of us is being played up on that makes us want to go get those games when otherwise we might not really care if they had a wide retail release? It's worth thinking about. Make sure to share your memories of Blockbuster and other retail exclusives in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. What a lovely time we've had here together in the garage, but before we close, I want to leave you with some inspirational words from John Romero. Be kind, or I will make you my...